guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Lauren from My Something Beautiful Life, and today we're going to talk about my budget and finance planner. This is a deluxe monthly planner from Erin Condren. I absolutely love this for my budget and for all my finances because of all of the note space that's in it. I found that a lot of pre-made budgets are, they, they just don't have what I need in them, and so I love that I can customize the pages to be exactly what I need them to be and not just some pre-made pages. So that's why I chose to use the Erin Condren Deluxe Monthly Planner. And I will link to it in the description box below in case anybody's interested in trying it out. Make it easier for you to find. Alright, so then opening it up. The first thing I have is one of these little pouches that Erin Condren, um, they used to put these in their life planners. They have since stopped, but... I actually have quite a few of them. When I realized that they weren't adding them into their life planners anymore, I actually went and stocked up on some, so I have quite a few. And I just have them hooked in with two little coil clips. And I've just been using it in the front of my planner to hold receipts. Then this is a dashboard that I made last year. It's just some laminated scrapbook paper with some little stickers on it. Eventually I want to put like my goals on post-it notes, and then as I accomplish each individual step I can just pull off the post-it note and replace it with a new one so I made that and so that just sits in the front so first you have this year at a glance or I guess 18 months at a glance the only thing I've really used it for is for marking when my website domains are up for renewal that's pretty much the most reoccurring abnormal thing I might put birthdays in too or something um, honestly I never go back and look at this but this is information that sometimes I want to have, and I need to know when. I need to know when the domains are renewing so I can plan for it. So it is nice that if I do happen to need the information, I have it here already to go. All right, and then this page I haven't done anything with yet either. I was thinking about using it as kind of a monthly overview, but honestly, I'm putting that in my monthly, in like behind the monthly tab too. And so I don't know if I'll actually end up using this for anything. And then I'm just going to skip to March because that's when, that's the month that we're on right now. And so I'll just show you what I have set up for March. And we'll just talk a little bit about how I'm using this to keep track of all my finances. So on this first page before the month, so if you don't know how Erin Condren planners are set up, um, you have the tab here that has the inspirational quote. You have a notes page before the month. You have this little dashboard page here. This is normally blank. I added in this text. It's normally just a white space. And then you get into the monthly calendar and then you have some notes pages, some blank, some blank lined notes pages. So on this first lined page, I'm using it for my sinking funds. And so I have my sinking funds listed here. I'll put my starting point, which right now is zero because I haven't technically started them yet. I'm hoping to this month. But these are the funds that I'm planning on starting with, or at least working towards building up to. I'll have my starting amount for the month, how much is added that month, if I spend anything from each category, and then the ending amount for the month. And then right here I have the spending portion of it. So if I do spend anything from any of my sinking funds, I can write it down here, how much it was and then what it was for. And that way I can just keep track of how much is in each sinking fund at one time and what they're being used on. So that way if anything changes where I find I'm using more money than I planned on, then I can always up the amount that I'm adding to it each month so that I know that I have plenty in there in the coming months. So that's my sinking funds page. and then turning it I did create this little grid thing to put here and I will get back to this in a minute it kind of plays into what I have going on in the next few pages so we'll just talk about this page first and then I'll come back to this so right here this spot normally says birthdays on it and I changed it to loan this is a specific loan that I'm working to pay off and so I wanted a space to track specifically that debt and so that's what this is for my monthly goals will go here. I did leave that the same because I thought that was good. I'm really big on setting goals, and so I like that they included a space where you can put goals in. In this box, I have anything specific that's going on for this month. So my nephew's birthday is this month, and so that's what I included. Um, anything out of the ordinary or just anything I just want to keep a note of, 
I can put it in this spot so that I can remember it while I'm doing my planning. And then in this last box on the bottom, I just did space for notes. Oftentimes I just need a spot to write down random things that come up, anything that I just want to remember in future months or future days and just know that I'll forget. And so I can use this to write it down so I remember certain things that I've paid or made partial payments or whatever it is that I need. I just have this little note space for that. All right, and so then for my monthly view, I have these bill pay stickers. I got these from Jen Plans in her Facebook group. Um, I might have changed the colors a little bit. I don't remember for sure. I know her colors are pretty similar. I use them to color code my bills based on when I get paid. So all of the red things are things that I will get paid with this paycheck. All of the teal things are ones that will get paid with this paycheck. And I do have this as a little guide. Um, if I have any specific goals that I'm working on, I do have a purple one too that will go in for that. And then any random income I make throughout the month, I'm going to list it here. I'll probably actually list my regular paychecks here too. But this is just to keep track of any ongoing income so that I can remember to tally it up at the end of the month. And then we get into my actual budgets. So this concept is based on something that I saw from the Budget Mom. I really, her budgeting method really resonated with me because I've always had to, I like I've always budgeted my money by my paycheck. And so I like the way she broke it into different categories where you added up one category at a time to see what's remaining. What I've done in the past is that I just had a list of all the bills and I would sit there and put them in order of importance and then just go through them one at a time. I like the breaking it into categories better. And this gives me the option to add in my bills in one. I have cash envelopes, sinking funds, extra debt, savings. Oh, and this one at the top is giving. And then my income's up here. And so I really just like breaking it up into categories and then doing the math as I go to make sure that I'm planning for what needs to get paid first. Anything that's left over, then I can account for that in going into extra debt or going into my savings. And so I have my first paycheck completely set up here, um, except for finishing up the actual math part. This one, I don't have it all the way set up. I left out the little decorative things because there's a possibility that I might move some of these around. I'm, I've found that this is actually a little bit too much space, and then these ones I wanted more lines on. I wanted to change it up, see which areas actually needed more lines and which ones could do with less. So that's actually how I budget per month, is doing it one paycheck at a time. And then going back to this page right here. So what my intention was with this is to set it up as almost a projected budget. So if I worked the amount of hours that I want to work, how would I break up the money? And then at the end of the month, I can go through and put in what the actual is and what the difference is. So that way I have a plan for what my goal is, but that's not necessarily like how it's actually going to play out. It just gives me something to aim for in regards to my budget. And then right up here, I just have some basic categories I wanted to track the totals of at the end of each month. So that's how I would use that page. All right, and then if we go back to after the budgets. These are the last two pages I have in it. This is the account tracker and then my spending tracker. So this one is actually everything that I spend, everything I buy throughout the month. It's just an ongoing list of my actual purchases. The account tracker is made so I have a running total of what's in my bank account. The balance that I have available still to use. This just helps me to make sure that I'm not overdrafting. And then this is paying attention to more what I'm spending money on. So those are the last two pages that I have in my budget each month. And then after that, it just goes back into the next month. And so if you're interested in setting up your budget in this way, I have decided that I'm going to list all of these budget stickers in my Etsy shop. I wasn't sure if it was something I was planning on doing, but I figured since I was filming this video, um, I will put a set in there and see if you guys like it. So I will link to that below in case you're interested. I won't have this exact set in there. I'm going to start with April since we're already 
a few days into March. I figure most people probably won't need one for March. Um, if you do happen to want it, just send me a message on Etsy and I'll see if I can get that worked out for you. But I will have April listed and so I will link to that in the description. And then we'll move on to the back of the book. This is the notes section. So it does have this page. I'm not doing anything with that. But then I wanted to show you what pages I have in the back. So with the Deluxe Monthly Planners, they give you the option of adding in extra notes pages. I think you get 40 pages normally, and you have the option to add on up to 80 more. I actually didn't add any pages into this, and this seems to be plenty for me. But just know that if you have more things that you want to track in the back, you do have the option of adding in even more pages. So the first thing I have here is just going to be a list of important dates, what they are, how much I either do spend on them or plan to spend, just anything that needs to be planned for throughout the month. The next page I have my 2020 goals that will be on this page. I'm going to track my net worth from the beginning of the year and also from the end of the year on here, just so I have a little reference point of how it's changing. The next page is my 2020 income. So at the end of each month, I'll just add up how much I made throughout the month and just do an overall what I made each month. And then this is how much I've, I'm giving to my church through 2020. I have a page for car maintenance here. I have not done any car maintenance yet, but I do have some things that need to be done on my car. And so I want to keep track of the cost of all of those. And so I made a page for that. And then also I'm going to be tracking my credit score. I have four sections here because I get my credit score through a few different places. So there's the three basic credit union, or not credit unions, um, credit agencies, the TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax, I think is the last one. I have the Credit Karma app, so I can check two of them through there. I think it's Equifax and TransUnion, I'm not sure. There's two of them that I can track through Credit Karma. And then also a couple of my credit cards will give me my credit score every month. So I plan on keeping track of how that changes here. The next page is an overall list of my sinking funds. Here I have the sinking funds that I want to do. Not necessarily the ones I'm going to be doing at all times, but the ones that are my goals to have at some point. So this will just help me to keep track of all my sinking funds. And if I need to add a new one, then I have a, a basic place where I can go and reference all of them. So here I have my yearly goals, how much I'm paying monthly, and if they have a due date or a specific time when I will need that money, then I did put that here. But honestly, most of them are just going to be ongoing funds that I can just use as needed, and the money will just build up throughout the year. So I have two pages for that. This year, one of the things I want to do is build my emergency fund. So I have a goal of $1,000. I did a little tracker here that I can color in as I save money. And then I can keep track of the actual, I guess, deposits in these columns. I also want to start saving for my house. My first goal is $200. So again, I'm going to start that here. So these are my two main saving savings goals for 2020. So that's what I'm tracking on these two pages. Right, this next page we get into my credit cards. So this is for my Discover card. I have one for my Amazon, Capital One, and then my student loans. So those are just my debt payoffs that I'm working on. So I can just keep track of the current balances and how much interest I'm paying. And then that's it. I still have a few more notes pages, but I haven't filled anything in on those. In the back they have a pocket and I'm just using it to hold a bunch of stickers. It really needs to be cleaned out. It's not very organized right now. but. That's what's in there. And then on the back, I have some bills and just some other random letters. And I have, and then it's just the back cover. So that is my budget planner and how I'm setting it up. I hope you guys like this video. I will have everything linked below in the description. And if you like this video, I'd love it if you gave me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos about planners, planning tips, and productivity, then I would be really grateful if you guys subscribed. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.